did our culture have any influence on Egyptian culture? Because we can see sun temples in worship of sun in the Egyptian civilization. That's a good question. So yes, the Egyptians did worship the sun. I think it was Akhenaten who introduced temporarily a monotheistic cult of worshipping the sun. And uh, after his uh, death, uh, Egypt uh, reverted to their polytheistic system. So Akhenaten was the husband of the great, uh, very famous queen Nefertiti. So yes, the Egyptians did worship the sun. And even when it was not this brief monotheist, uh, monotheistic period, overall Egypt was a polytheistic culture and the sun god was part of their uh, pantheon of gods. I believe that the sun, the worship of the sun is something that you will see throughout the world in all polytheistic cultures. So it's not necessarily because of Indian influence. However, it doesn't mean there was no Indian influence in Egypt. So around, around uh, 1600 BCE or thereabouts, there was an invasion into Egypt from the north. These were a nomadic warrior people. Uh, they were horse riders. They had chariots. They had bows and arrows, and they had uh, they had copper weapons, the the axe and the sword. And they introduced new technologies into Egypt that were not present before. And the Egyptians called these people the Hyksos. And these Hyksos, who came from the north, they worshipped a storm god, a thunder god, who is very reminiscent of our own thunder god Indra. So their customs were very reminiscent and very similar to Vedic customs. The chariot, the horse, horse sacrifices, and the, the manner of warfare was also similar to Vedic and, and post-Vedic Indian uh, manner of fighting. And the weapons that you find are also similar and the god that they refer to. The Western historians uh, try to associate this god with the Middle Eastern god Baal, who is also a storm god of sorts. But if you look at the overall pattern of the culture and uh, manner of invasion and tactics and strategies of the Hyksos, it's very clear that it's, it's an Indo-European people who came from the north. Now, north of Egypt at that time, you had the Mitanni kingdom and the Hittites. These were both Indo-Aryan kingdoms. These were all... Uh, these are all kingdoms that were ruled by an Indo-Aryan aristocracy, by an Indo-Aryan ruling class, Sanskrit-speaking people. So just north of Egypt, you have these guys, these Sanskrit-speaking descendants of Indians who worship Indra and Varuna and, and other gods, who are warriors, who have Vedic traditions and who follow the Vedic culture. So it's very clear that it is these people who invaded Egypt and who were known to the Egyptians as the Hyksos. So the Western mainstream historians disagree with this. They try to uh, to associate these Hyksos with uh, Middle Eastern and Western East, Western Asian uh, peoples. So the jury is still out there. The Western historians do not agree with the uh, the idea that these were Indo-European and Indo-Aryan people. But if you look at the overall evidence that we have, it's clear that these were nothing but the either the, the Mitanni or their Hittite neighbors. So clearly, if you look at this evidence, then there is definite Indian influence in ancient Egypt. And if you, and there's another piece of evidence. There is this famous king Tutankhamun, whose mummy was discovered more than 100 years ago. It was kept in Europe for many, many years. I'm not sure if it's gone back to Egypt or not. But they did a DNA analysis of King Tutankhamun and they found, they discovered that his patrilineal lineage, the patrilineal haplogroup was R1b. Now R1b is something that is a descendant of the R1 star haplogroup which most likely originates in India. There is also a subject of controversy but it's going to be resolved very soon. My very strong conviction is based on all the data that we have at our disposal that the R1 haplogroup originated in India. And if that is the case, if that is proven right, then it means that King Tutankhamun had Indian DNA. He was a descendant of an Indian patrilineal lineage. So that 
demonstrates again that there is Indian influence in uh, Egypt. And there are more, uh, there's more evidence of certain Egyptian pharaohs marrying the uh, marrying queens who were of Mitanni and uh, Hittite ancestry, which essentially is Indian ancestry. So there is a great deal of intermingling, at least in the royal uh, families, between the royalty of Egypt and people of Indian descent. And again, then we have the invasion by the Hyksos, who are, of, who are most likely of Indo-Aryan origin. So there's a great deal of ancient influence in Egypt. But as of now, as of today, it is not accepted by the mainstream eminent Western and Indian historians, but the evidence is all out there for everyone to see. You just need to see the patterns put together pieces and the evidence tells you what the truth is.